Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, and in today's video, I'm going to be repurposing that DRL circuit that I had run in my truck a few videos back, and I'll be using that to power grill lights. So, yep, I'm going to be adding grill lights. I've been pondering this one for a little while. Um, there's really no purpose, no functional purpose to this, other than the fact that I just like the way they look. So I figured, screw it, let's go ahead and get the lights off e uh, Amazon and let's walk through an installation of how those work. So I already have the wiring run for the DRL circuit, so I have the power already there. All I need to do is get the lights, throw them in the grill, wire them up to that power, and then I'm good to go. But what I wanted to walk you through is how do you get from where we're at right now to getting these guys installed and getting everything run as far as the wiring. So I'll walk through step by step on that. I know there's about a half a dozen videos out there right now of guys adding the Raptor style or T-Rex style lights to their grill, but no one really goes into detail as to how they fit in the grill. They just, all of a sudden the lights are in the grill. Um, but I wanted to show you kind of how, how it works out because I went through a couple different sets of these lights before I figured out which ones work best for our grills. So, uh, let's do this. Let's talk about what we're going to need to do this. You're going to need a plastic panel trim removal tool, uh, this pronged one, because you're going to need to remove the shroud over the top of the radiator. You're going to need a flat head. You're going to need a 10 millimeter socket. I'm just going to use an impact. Uh, you could use a hand tool as well. You need some extra wiring. And this is a question I get a lot, so I might as well tackle this one while I'm at it. Every time I post a light video, everyone's always asking me what wiring I use for wiring up the lights. And there's no real science to it. I basically go to Menards, I pick up the trailer wiring, I'll get 14 gauge, or in this case, I'll just use 16 gauge for these little LEDs, and that's what I use. That's how I make all my harnesses. It's no different than the wires that you're getting in all those prefab harnesses that you get from the lighting manufacturers. Obviously, some zip ties, some heat shrink, uh, your typical electrical tape, some electrical fittings. I'm gonna butt connect everything. Uh, you can also solder them. I'm horrible at soldering, so I'm going to use butt connections. If you followed any of my videos in the past, you know that I, that's kind of my go-to for electrical stuff. I've never had any bad luck with them. I know some people swear and say, ah, if you're going to do lighting, you need to do uh, solder joints. I just suck at soldering. Um, I'm going to be very frank on that. All right, now the piece de la resistance of the light or the grill light kit are the actual lights themselves. So like I said, I went through a couple different lights before I settled on the ones that I'm looking at right here. So these are obviously clear and I went with these for a particular reason. Um, the first set of lights that I purchased off Amazon were the bolt style ones. So if you look at my GMC video where I did grill lights, I used the bolt, si bolt style ones from Osnium. The lights were awesome and they looked really good in that grill. However, because of how this grill is designed with these large openings that are roughly three quarters of an inch wide, you need to be careful with what you're jamming in there. And I've actually found that the three quarter inch marker lights with the rubber gasket around the outside actually pushes into place really nicely. So um, I tried the bolt ones and you can jam them in here, but I really didn't like jamming them in there. I felt like at some point I was gonna crack the plastic. With these guys, they fit in there nicely. You push them in there if you put a little bit of wd-40 on it it slides right into the opening and then you're good to go um, you're not bending anything out of shape so nothing's going to get deformed by having these so i will leave a link for these guys down in the description below the other reason why i went with these ones in particular versus the other ones you see on the market is i like the ones that are white with the amber leds and that's what these are so these are amber color leds but the actual lens itself is white which i think will look nice with everything i didn't want three or, or three or four orange lights sticking out in my grill. I feel like this just blends well with the rest of it. So these are a little bit different than your normal three quarter marker lights because they have actually three wires going into it. So they have a red, black, and a yellow. The black is gonna be your negative, and then the red and the yellow are your high or lows. So these actually have two outputs, and I'm not quite sure how that works. My guess is one wire powers, let's say three quarters of the LEDs in here, and the other wire powers the other quarter of the LEDs. So you can have, only a few LEDs on, or you can have all the LEDs on. So as far as coming to the installation, if you follow my Instagram, you know I dropped the poll this morning and I was asking everyone for input on whether I should go with the typical three lights or if I should upgrade it and go with the four lights. And by unanimous decision, the four light won. So I'm good. I'm glad about that because I like the way the four lights work with this grill. They actually look really good, whereas the three lights work really well with some other grills. But you have a lot of options with this guy, and the four lights, somewhat offset, are going to look great. As far as getting started, let's pop that up. First thing we're going to do is remove this shroud, and that's easy to move. 
you just basically take your trim tool and you pry out these guys and pop them out. There's a bunch of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these guys. Then the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this plastic trim. So this trim has a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts all across the top here. You got a push pin up on the top here, push pin up on the top here, and then this just simply pulls out. Then the last thing we're gonna do is just slowly pry out our grill. I'm not removing the grill completely. So in this video, I'll show you how to reach behind the grill without having to remove it. So let me go ahead and get that shroud removed and then get this little plastic trim piece removed and then I'll show you how much room that buys you behind here. And I'm actually curious if I could reach my emblems here because if I can, then maybe it's time to remove these guys and paint them black. But let's get that shroud off. All right, so I have all those push pins removed from the shroud. So I just wanna show you quickly how to pull this out. You can't just pull it straight up. It's actually attached back here on the back of a little clip on, or a back of a little bracket on top of the radiator bracket or radiator um, support. And it's also tucked underneath your uh, fenders here. So really what I do is I just pull that guy up. I'll pull that guy up and then we'll just pop it off and that's it. So set that aside and uh, and now we are gonna remove this plastic trim. So like I said, it's just a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts plus some push pins. So ooh, I left that guy loose from the last time I pulled it off. So we're gonna remove these 10 millimeter bolts and then we're gonna use a flathead to pull this guy out because he is a push pin, but it's not the same kind as this. It actually is easier to use a flathead because you need something with a little bit more backbone to pull that guy out. And then once this is out, then you'll have access to the top of the grill and you'll have enough, to, enough room to be able to pop these little brackets up and move the grill out just enough that you can get your hand back there and then we can start working on wiring you're already starting to see uh, where it is this is my relay that at one point in time did control my oz usa backlighting and it also controlled the backlighting in my original 20 inch light bar down here since i replaced those guys with diode dynamics that guy with the z roads light bar i have this drl circuit just sitting there so we're going to repurpose that to power my grill lights all right, so I have all the 10 millimeter bolts removed off of that top little grill trim piece, but I just wanna show you what those push pins look like. So when they are in the hole and installed, they basically look like this guy. You use a flat head, get that flat head underneath the little lip right here. And when you pull it up, you basically pull this guy out and pull him all the way out because these guys are tapered and it's just a lot easier to remove everything. But set those aside, we'll set our 10 millimeter bolts aside. And then it's as simple as just taking this guy and sliding them straight back and then he is off. So now the next thing we're gonna do now that we have access up here is we're gonna undo that 10 millimeter bolt, that guy, that one, and that one. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna free up the top of the grill and I'll be able to then pull the grill out just a little bit so then I could start working on fishing the wires from behind and we could lay out our lights and then it's smooth sailing from there. All right, let's talk about how we're gonna power those grill lights. Now, I've seen a couple of videos where guys will run the lights and then they'll take the positive end of those lights and they'll drive it right into a fuse position here with a, with a, add a fuse and they'll basically just steal power from a circuit and use that to power the lights. And they'll basically find a circuit or a fuse that only gets power once the truck is on and that's how they get their lights. I, so you could probably do that, but I always, I'm cautious about stealing that much power from existing circuits on these trucks. These trucks are like little tiny networks. And when the BCM sends power out to a certain sig circuit, it expects that circuit to only want that much power. So if you're gonna start to drive more lights or more accessories off of existing circuits, your BCM is gonna see a whole bunch of wacky stuff going on with the output side of the power and it could potentially lock out your BCM or even worse, fry it out. I've seen this happen. I've seen BCMs on Fords go into safe mode. I strongly urge you guys to not do that. Don't steal total power from a circuit and expect to run your lights on that. Light bars, any of that stuff. That's way too much amperage draw that you're adding to existing circuits. Now the right way, or at least in my opinion, the right way to do this is to run a relay. So if you remember in my video a few uh, months back, I ran the DRL circuit. And basically what I did is I installed a 12 volt relay that used this circuit to tell the relay to close. And then the relay has its own power feed to it, which will send that to whatever light I want it to power. I'm not using the power from this 
uh, marker lamp to power whatever accessory I'm, I'm running, I'm using the power from this to just close the relay, which is such a small amperage draw. You run less of a risk of having BCM issues by doing it this way than you would by throwing a fuse inside your fuse box and expecting that to be your, your primary power for your new lights. So let's talk about how I wired this fuse, or I'm sorry, this relay. Um, and it's a lot easier since I drew a picture of it. So here is our 12 volt relay that I have installed in my truck. We got a couple things going on it. So let's kind of orient yourself to here. This is the relay itself. So this is the back of it. Most 12 volt relays will have four, possibly five terminals on it. So they're all numbered. The bottom one's 30. You'll have 85, 86, 87, and 87A. So we also have our battery here and then a fuse, grounds, and our lights. So let's talk about how, what terminal powers what. So you wanna run from the positive side of your battery, you wanna run through an appropriately sized fuse, your power to terminal 30 on the relay. So that will be your 12 volt constant power. It's okay if it's always on, you're gonna be using the switch, or you're gonna be using the relay as a switch, but you want that power to go to terminal 30. Terminal 86. This is gonna be the, the magic maker. This is gonna be the signal that goes into the relay that tells the relay when to close this bridge here and power your lights and basically sending that 12 volts all the way through the relay to the lights. So this is where I have that posi tap and I'm, uh, I have it tapped into an existing circuit. So I'm using the marker lamp circuit, which is a white with an orange stripe. So I'm using that power in that wire so when that wire turns on or when those marker lights turn on that's going to send a signal that signal is going to close my relay and it's going to connect a bridge across from 30 to 87. So 87 is the obvious one where this is your output so this is your power output to your grill lights. If you plug this in and have nothing powering on 30 or you're not providing 12 volts to 30 I'm sorry if you plug in lights to terminal 87 and 86 not doing anything 87 will remain off. However, when 86 turns on, that's going to tell the relay to close this bridge here and connect a 12 volt to 87, and that will power on your lights. Now, the last thing you need to do is make sure that relay is grounded. So you've got a couple different options here as well. You could run terminal 85 directly to a frame ground, or in my case, I just ran it simply to the battery. So I have a positive and negative wire harness coming off of my battery. My positive has a fuse on it. It goes into the relay and then I have the marker lights driving terminal 86. 87 is then fed into my lights. So in this case, I'm gonna take terminal 87, use that to feed each of my lights, and then I'm gonna take the grounds, and I'm just gonna tie them back into the ground on here, which goes back to my battery over on that side of the truck. You do not need a fuse going from 87 to the grill lights. It would be redundant because you already have a fuse here, and essentially when you close this, this is all one complete circuit. So this fuse here should be your um, should be sized for the amperage of the lights. I don't know what these are. So honestly, I think a 10 amp fuse is gonna be slightly overkill, but any fuse is better than no fuse on this one. And keep that fuse as close as you can to the battery. So the next thing I'm gonna do then after that is I'm gonna get my grill lights situated in the grill here. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Let me get my hands warmed up and then we will dive into the grill. Oh, one other thing. So before we do that, I wanted to show you, I removed the 10 millimeter bolt here, 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 and here. So the top of the grill has four 10 millimeter bolts. Then all you got to do is just basically pull these guys up and let's see, there we go. Just pull those guys up. Now, like I said, you don't want to do this when it's cold because you want some malleability on it. But with it being able to pull out just like that, I now have enough room to run my hands back behind here and snake up the wires for my lights because I don't want to be drilling any holes here. I just want to basically run them up this little channel here and now it opens it up. And then once it closes, once I snap it shut, that foam keeps everything nice and sealed. Okay, so I was starting to get all my wiring set up and originally I was gonna run bolt circuits. So the yellow is the low, the red is the high. And then I was thinking, why the hell would I run all that wire when I could just test it real quick? And my suspicion is incorrect. So there are three LEDs inside this guy and even on the low setting, they all turn on. So red is high, yellow is low, but all three LEDs will power in each of the modes. So 
um, what I determined is I'm gonna wire up everything for the high so I'm gonna use the red and actually what you can do is you could tie the red and the yellow together and the output doesn't change so it just keeps the wires clean and out of the way so for each wire I'm gonna run both a positive and a negative and the positive is gonna be tied right to that red wire I'm gonna run them up from here up here and then I'll have pigtails and I'll just tie all the positives together tap those into my relay tie all the negatives together and then that'll go on the other side of my relay and then we're good to go all right so i have my light with my pigtails on there i put some heat shrink on there and i just taped the two butt connectors together that way they stay together in kind of one whole piece so now the next thing i'm going to do is just kind of decide where i'm going to be uh popping in my lights so what i'm originally thinking is either in this hole that guy on the side ones and then go a few over and then do one there skip these guys and do the same thing kind of rinse and repeat on that side so what i'm thinking is probably i'll do this i'll skip two and then i'll put one there so i'll have two lights here and i'll do the same thing on the other side so i'll let's see i went one in skip skip and then one in and then that will give me i think the gap that i want all right so this is the layout we're going to go with and the reason i picked this is because i wanted to keep the lights on top of this little the rebel grill hump thing but I think it'll look kind of cool if I line up one on the outside there, skip two, put one there, and I'll skip three, put another light, skip two, put the outside light. I think that'll give it a nice proportion. So like I said, the next thing you're gonna do is just take your whip with the lights and just drop it down behind here. Um, and then we're gonna seat this guy into place. So you gotta be careful with these lights. Uh, most of these three quarter lights, they're directional. So you wanna make sure that uh, the section that is marked top and it's etched in there, is actually at the top and that way the reflectors are up and down and they'll push the light out side to side you don't want them let's see you don't want them like this because then you'll put the light push the light up and down and you'll barely be able to see it you want to have those reflectors inside the light vertical all right so we got our light good to go let's get focus in on there so this is why i suggested pulling the grill off a little bit because you could squeeze your hand back there and you'd be able to fish back or fish through some of these wires here. So what I'll do, pop it in like that. All right, so the wires are through. Again, you gotta be careful with everything. Don't pull too hard. Pull those wires enough to get them up over that little threshold. And then we're gonna pay attention to our light. So our light, this is the top. And just like that, it pops right into place. So I'm gonna mess with them a little bit to get them to seat better. Though some of the wires are pushing on them and since it's cold, they're kind of pushing them out of the hole. Um, but yeah, let me get this guy situated and then we'll get him buttoned up right into place. All right, so I have all the lights installed. So like I said, I went with two on the outside, on each side, and then I've offset three of the spaces in between. If you were to just do um, three lights in the grill, the official Raptor spacing is like six and three quarters between the lights. So you do here and a measure over six inches, which might put you right about there uh, on both sides of it. But like I said, I went with four on here. So I got two on each side, uh, spaced out two openings here, two openings on the side, and then three in the middle. So I have all the wiring pulled up now up over the top here. So I'm gonna take all those pigtails and I'm gonna tie them into my relay over here. So I'm gonna tie all the positives together and run them all this way and then I'll tie all the negatives, run it that way and then I'll wrap everything in wire loom and then we should be good to go to fire it up. All right, so the wiring is done. I got everything tied into my little relay here. I got my ground, I'm just basically using this AC and it looks like a high pressure line bracket here for my ground and then I have the signal coming out of the relay. It chases down these wires and then it, I have drops there, a drop there, a drop there, a drop there. So basically I loomed everything. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and zip tie everything. I already did a test. Um, the lights do work. So let me get everything cleaned up, buttoned up, and then we can take a look and see what these lights look like. All right, so I went ahead and buttoned up everything after zip tying all those wires down. So as far as reinstallation of everything, you reinstall this little plastic grill trim piece. Uh, it's all those 10 millimeter bolts plus the push, push pin on each side. There's two of them. Make sure you re-bolt in the grill there. So there's four of those 10 millimeter bolts. Then you throw the fan shroud back on and you're good to go. So let's fire up the truck. Let's get the lights turned off here and make sure I hit auto. No. Looks pretty good. 
and that orange or that amber matches the side marker right over here pretty good so I think that turned out awesome all right so that is how you install uh, we'll call them Raptor or TRX lights in your Ram Rebel so again make sure you get the ones with the rubber grommet the three quarter inch marker lights with the rubber grommet and they push right into the grill and they look nice in there there you go so as far as wiring, like I said, I've seen videos of people using the fuse box to borrow power for the lights. I highly recommend not doing that. So this is how I would do it. I would add in a relay and basically run a power from the battery up to terminal 30 on your relay. Terminal 87 is gonna tie into your new lights. That's gonna be the power for your new lights. Ground that guy. So in my case, I just ground it to the frame. And then, you could use your marker lights to turn the relay on, which will bridge the power from terminal 30 to terminal 87. So in my case, I have the LED, the basic LED headlights. I don't have the limited LED headlights. So there is a white wire with an orange stripe in it that I used a posi tap to grab the signal from that wire, send it into terminal 86, and that's what closes my terminal, or I'm sorry, closes the switch here when I turn my truck on. Again, make sure you got a fuse on here coming out of the battery before you go into the relay. You don't need a fuse on the 87 terminal going out to the light. That's redundant. Just make sure this one's at least a 5 amp or a 10 amp. Uh, these grill lights are not going to pull that much amperage. So I will leave the parts uh, list down in the description below. But there's about a half, uh, probably more than half a dozen different versions of these lights. Pick which ones work best for you. I know there's ones that are actually orange. Uh, some are red if you want to go that route. I don't know if it's even legal. Uh, or in my case, you go with the clear ones. And like I said, these things had a high and low function. I wired them up for the high function just based on when I tested it. I didn't really like how low the low function actually was. When you go to install it, make sure that the reflectors are pointing straight up and down. That way you're getting the right uh, light coming out of each of the light. And then have at it. Pick which setup you want to do and just run with it. I bought mine in a pack of, I think it's a pack of 10. So I have another six lights that I can mess around with. I think I might throw them on my kids' little four-wheelers. But uh, what do you think? How do you think those turned out? I think they look awesome, and I'm, uh, I'm pumped to kind of drive around and see what this looks like out, in, uh, out at night. But with that said, thank you very much for watching the video. Have a good night.